I personally think. Oh, here we go. We're going. Okay. Okay. Up on. Just got to check there. We'll go to here. Hey. Let's get in. All right. Yeah, both cameras here. Whoa, there's us. Back. Hey, folks. Ready? All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Rich and Ryan with Music Medic. We are doing our Friday Live product review that we do every Friday. Uh, we don't always do a review, but we always feature a product of ours or of, or of a vendor that we use. And so I'm going to give you guys a quick update of a couple of the products that we have uh, that our customers have been asking. And then we're going to go over our, the Nipex uh, pliers that we uh, use. Uh, and we're going to tell you how to say the word Nipex correctly and the word uh, swedge, which has some uh, different pronunciations uh, throughout the different industries. So the first product update that we're going to give you is an update on our post counterbore set. This is a tool that we came out with last Friday and it's been rolling out well. Customers are enjoying it. The only thing that I wanted to give you an update on is that when it arrives at your door, it's going to have this protective paper on it. Uh, make sure you guys peel that off so you can get to the shiny clear acrylic top. Look like. So that's our ultimate post counterbore set, and we've got a video uh, on how to use that, um, I think, on Facebook right now, and we'll get it over here to this platform. The other update that we have is our taps and dies, our woodwind tap and die set that's been in development for a little while. Uh, we are currently drawing the packaging, and it's going to have some sort of similar acrylic and... Uh, customized packaging for that so we're kind of fleshing that out we're doing the final testing on some of the other components so once we get the packaging done we'll be able to uh, do another video and release that uh, so for the Nipex first of all uh, Nipex is, is pronounced Knipex because it's German and that's how they pronounce it um, and then we're gonna do Music Medic has been selling Knipex pliers. I gotta like, can we just say Nipex? I think we can. Please. For the well, purpose of this video, Nipex is a little, I don't know, it's kind of easier. Yeah. So for the Nipex pliers that we have, um, the from right to left, we've got a few new additions. So these first three here, we'll talk about, these are the ones that we've added to the website as of late 2020 and 2021. So these two that Ryan are holding are the uh, Nipex uh, 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 needle nose pliers that have smooth jaws. They have a, uh, a chamfer on the end so that they can get into tight spaces. It may be hard to see on the, uh, on the screen there, but they also have broken edges, so they're not gonna mar anything. We will use these on smaller woodwinds or even bass clarinet to get into hard to reach places for uh, bending or adjusting springs or applying or removing materials. They come in two different uh, tip sizes or tip, not sizes, but tip shapes. So you have the straight one there and then a 45 degree for different uh, accessibility and clearance. And then the next addition is the Nipex round nose pliers. And so these are a little, we sell a smaller pair of round nose pliers. Uh, the Music Medic round nose pliers are good for adjusting springs and getting into tight to reach places. The, uh, the Nipex have slightly larger jaws and um, they're probably about an inch long, uh, 24, 25 millimeters long. They are uh, incredibly strong so you can bend all sorts of materials without marring. And we have another uh, Wednesday Wisdom, a saxophone instructional keywork video that Scott Mandeville used these with to bend keys. He was uh, uh, bending a steel posts. rod, yeah. aligning posts. Yeah. yeah, these are all real nice, the round jaw, the ceramic marring. So those are the, the latest uh, to the Music Medic catalog. And then this guy here is our uh, it's the Nipex side cutting pliers. This is an awesome 
pair of side cutting pliers. This will this will cut hardened steel um, and cut hardened steel springs. And this is this is typically what you'll use for cutting thicker steel springs. We do have a pair of pliers, uh, a sheer steel pair of pliers called the Zeron pliers, which you can see in another video where we demonstrate those. And those hold the off cut, and so it doesn't fly across the room like with these. But these are you're still gonna. These are really still a go-to plier for most uh, cutting of hardened steel wire. Absolutely. This here is an 074 drill rod. So if you're making drill rods, it will also cut them. Like butter. Like butter. <laughs> and the next. So these are the basically the newest additions, and then maybe it's just we'll start from right to left. The the next two pairs of pliers are the original Nipex pliers that. Had been in the band industry, band repair industry for a long time. We adopted these and started using them in the shop. And they come in a six inch and seven inch version. And these are parallel jawed pliers, smooth parallel jawed pliers. And they have this cam action and a button that you can push down to lock the, uh, the, the width of the jaws into place. So these can be used both for woodwind repair, brass repair and general shop use and the jaws are incredibly strong so i'm going to show you can you show them the, the bench block i sure can yeah even this is the smaller parallel nipex and you can see i can hold on to my steel bench block i don't know why you would want to do this but it's a possibility and the nice thing i like about the nipex or knipex is the handles you can adjust those so that it's nice and close together where you get the maximum amount of grip. If it's trying to grab a, a big, wide pair of pliers like this, you don't have, have as much strength in your hands. So here you can adjust the tip opening while keeping the handle close together. This is the small, same thing as the large. Very nice. Very nice go-to all-around plier. So that's the, the small and medium Nipex pliers that we have on the website. And then we have this Big Daddy. Um, this is going to be used. We don't really use this for woodwind repair, but the brass folks and percussion folks have uses for the larger pliers. So we offer that. And then we are going to move on to pliers that we machine in our shop at Music Medic. So the steel is incredibly strong and the quality of the Nipex pliers is kind of unbeatable. Yep. So we've adopted these to use in our shop and we have machined them on our, um, our high-speed milling machines uh, to create different types of pliers specific to the band instru instrument trade. So let's talk about the duckbill, the Nipex duckbill uh, medium and small pliers. So these are the medium and small, uh, same as as these guys here that we mill into what is a traditional kind of duckbill shape used in the band repair trade. These are gonna allow you to get in between key work, to grab onto key spines, to adjust pad cups in any matter, and you're gonna be able to use these on the instrument as well. I find that uh, technicians will use these on any size of instrument, so you can use them uh, from saxophone down to clarinet and flute and piccolo, and is there a mini piccolo? Uh, even smaller, but you could, <laughs> you could. Uh, so those are excellent, and the jaws are again smooth. Um, all the edges are broken, so they're not going to mark keys. And can you do the do the trick with the the bench block and the, the bench block is the small. So this pair of pliers is, is probably one of our most popular because of its it's small, it's easy to get into tight spaces, and it's still super strong. Super strong. There's no flex in those jaws. That's awesome. So we use those all the time for You can also grab rods, or they're just an excellent general key working plier um, that for woodwind repair. Cool. So now we're going to move on to the different types or sizes of swedging pliers that we offer. So we take the same six and seven inch pliers and we used to use a wire EDM machine to cut the holes in these and we have since switched to high speed milling. The jaws are smooth and they have a chamfered edge. Um, some of our customers have said, you know, what's the difference between a chamfer and a radius? Why do you do that? We 
chance for them to, of course, break the edge. And instead of using a radius to smooth the edge, we use a chamfer because it's just easier um, manufacturing wise. Uh, the other reason is that this will give you, uh, because the jaws are tapered, the taper, uh, the chamfer allows the holes to be parallel. So this does provide uh, relief and clearance for, say, if you have some solder around a joint, the chamfer allows you some clearance there, but it also keeps the holes parallel. And you want, you want your jaws perpendicular to your shaft. So that's very important. So Ryan's just going to show you, uh, what's that, the medium? This is the medium. So we have two different sizes, the medium, small, and they. you can go on Music Medic and check out the different hole diameters to make sure they apply to your uh, application. We also have a, before Ryan demonstrates, a single hole plier. And a lot of technicians like the Nipex jaws, but they need a hole right at the very end and a larger diameter for clearance. So we offer that, I think, in a five millimeter diameter. And we do offer custom size holes, but it, because we are just not doing, we're not such a small machine shop anymore, um, custom sizes are available, but it does take uh, a while because we have to wait till we're running a batch of pliers before we could do a custom size. So you're welcome to contact us and we'll do a custom size. It just might take a while. Um, and then on the far end, we have a couple of prototypes that we've used. And these are just to demonstrate uh, some of the experimenting we've done in the Saks Pro Shop with different profiles and different um, uh, hole diameters and such. And Ryan, can you just tell me about the one, that guy there, and why we did or did not adopt that? Absolutely. This is some experimenting. You can see we took some, we made a little relief on the top. And then the bottom for, we were trying to get some more acceptability. We also milled the jaws so that they themselves are actually parallel. Uh, the problem that we were having with these and testing is using the hole at the very, their very end, the very tip. Um, we were finding that there was a little bit too much flex, even though these jaws are very, very strong, because we took out some material off the top and then off the sides. Um, it did slightly weaken it, so we were having some flex, so we decided to kind of abandon this uh, this design here and go with our standard design, which, as you can see, has more meat. Uh, we do chamfer those holes so that it does make it parallel, and even though these look parallel and these don't, uh, with that chamfer in the hole, when you swage, it does swage in a parallel uh, fashion on your shaft. Cool. Can you show us, Ryan, just uh, Absolutely. demonstrate with those pliers on a couple of keys? Yeah, quick demonstration on some on some swaging here. Um, so what you're going to do is uh, it's needed to uh, to tighten up the hinge tube and also lengthen it at the same time. Anytime you were doing your swaging, you always want to make sure that you have the rod within that, that hollow hinge tube. So I'm going to pick the, the hole that is the most appropriate size. If you pick a hole that is too small, you're going to end up with a lot of marring and crimping, and it's just not going to do a good job, and it's going to look very unsightly. If you use a hole that's too big, you're not really going to get any swaging action out of it. So um, what I'll do is I'll grab it at the very end. This is where you get the most amount of power. You don't want to grab it up here, grabbing it here. And when I squeeze, I'm using my last three fingers, making sure that the rod doesn't slide out. I will squeeze, I will release, and I will do a quarter of a turn. I squeeze, release, quarter of a turn, um, and that way you get that even swage all the way around. And make sure your hinge rod stays Absolutely. in there, right? Make sure your hinge rod stays <laughs> I don't want to crush see, that down. Yeah, even after all that swaging, the hinge rod feel nice and smooth. Cool. With that. And so now, why do you why do you hold the plier with the three fingers, the three last fingers, as opposed to the top three? The top three. When you the further you get out from this this plier handle, the the more force you can get. So if I grab all the way at the very end, I get a lot of a lot of crushing force here. If I grab right here near this fulcrum, I'm not going to get as much. That's why you know, I use the the three finger technique when I swage. Just like that. Now, sometimes I'll do a power swage. I'll get both hands in here and I'll squeeze like this. Whoa! You look in the copy. It's, it's it's a very it's a very scary. <laughs> the power swage, the two hundred power swage. Uh, but that's just another technique. Same thing with the smaller. Again, for your smaller keys, you would just pick 
So now what have you got there, a clarinet key? There's the clarinet key, and again, I have the rod in there. So you're just going to pick the correct hole. Same thing, these are a little bit smaller. Okay, it's a little bit easier to accept some of the smaller key work on the flutes and clarinets. So now it's just the same thing. Press, release, rotate. Press, release, rotate. That will really, really limit the amount of marring on your instrument. I think. Have we got it all? I think that's it. I think we went over our prototype swaging pliers. Hopefully we talked about swaging enough. We talked about our solids. Duckbill pliers. We talked about the big daddy. Mm -hmm. You got something stubborn. You got a stubborn, stubborn piccolo or, or oboe on your bench. This will take care of it. We got the, the standby. This is like the traditional Knipex. Yep. Great pliers. We have our side cutters. Very strong, nice wide jaws. Don't dig into your hands when you're cutting. And then we have our newest pliers. The needle nose from Knipex and the round nose. All Sweet. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for participating in our, this is our first live stream on YouTube. We'll start doing more of these on Fridays. Um, we do have a couple of classes coming up. Ryan is gonna be teaching a basic saxophone repair course next week and so this is kind of the general format of what it's going to look like uh, if you have more questions you can of course uh, contact us and we'll be happy to answer any questions about the tools or courses that we have available last week we did a flute course and the week before we did a clarinet course so we're going to be offering more of those as well in the near future um, and i think that's it for now so until next